again at our talk series Your Coolest Life. Today we are invited at Izzy Peskowitz's house. My name is Peter Alexander. Usually, Izzy, we invite people mm -hmm. in our living room in Vienna, but we just started traveling, <laughs> right. which is this really cool thing. So, thank, thanks for having us. A pleasure. Thanks for coming to the ranch. It's a great place. Uh, yeah, I love it. I, it uh, you know, I grew up as a surfer, but uh, I want to be a cowboy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you still surf, right? I still surf, but you know, <laughs> it seems like, uh, other than my dad, my dad was a very like tough, like virile, uh, manly surfer, but it seems like a lot of old surfers, they turn into old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and old cowboys get cooler and cooler and cooler. You know, so, I don't know. so my wife rides, so that's, uh, that's why we live on this little ranch. Yeah, we used to live by the beach, you know. Okay. About 20 years ago, I had the opportunity to move up here and have land. In there. But this guy is kind of a surf legend in California, or probably in the whole world. Um, growing up in a huge family mm -hmm. with like seven brothers and one sister, yeah, uh, like winning a lot of titles too, right? We got the championship trophy right here. The Coke Classic, yeah, that was a pretty cool uh, event in Australia because um, in Australia, surfing is is like as popular as football is here. So when I you know go into the bank to cash a check, everybody knew who I was. I didn't need ID. I was born and raised in Hawaii. Yeah. Born and raised in Hawaii, um, my uh, brothers and I. Um, but bef before that, my father um, born in Texas, but he moved to Hawaii when th there wasn't airplanes. Uh, he, he took a, a steamship no from way. LA to to Hawaii and and, uh, and just fell in love with surfing. You know? And uh, after the war, became a doctor and. Um, he passed away a few years ago at 93, but, you know, he was, he was an older father, had, had such a love for surfing. Um, uh, Mark Cuban did a, a documentary on him called Surfwise. We know, we know. We know. <laughs> hey, he didn't finish, Daniel. You grew up with, like, seven brothers, one sister, which is already, like, a story, but you grew up in a camper van. Yeah. You want to tell us more about this? Yeah, that you know that was just normal to us. That was um, that was the way we lived. You know, I, you knew everyone around us, and um, you know they had homes to go to, so we're a little envious of it. Uh, but you know, the sacrifice was the things that we got into, the trouble we got into every day as young kids. I mean, we'd wake up and then we'd just be gone and we'd come back in the evening um, was incredible. And those memories and those adventures that we took were just like, you know, like Tom Sawyer or some, you know, young adventurer, you know, turn of the century because we just had no supervision whatsoever at such a young age. Um, but, but around it also was, was like the love of a father um, and a mother to their family to their sons and daughter. And my dad just wanted everyone close. And you can get really close if you stick everybody in a camper that sleeps four, but you got 12 people in there. Quite a kind of interesting, different life, the, the way I grew up. But I have an interesting and different son. So, you know, having him son with autism, uh, I was set up for it, you know. I, was, I lived a weird, different life, and and uh, you know, Danielle and I uh, were living the dream. You know, a pro surfer and sponsored by you know all these companies and traveling around the world and winning contests and being mm. good at it. Mm. Uh, and then Isaiah comes uh, after our daughter Ella, and I'm just like, holy fuck! Now what? You know, the kid game over. I mean, how, how do we live? How do we survive? How do we? deal with this child that we have no idea what autism is about. Isaiah went to school today, right? Yes. And he had a good day at school. Yes. And what did he have for lunch? They have fried chicken and macaroni and cheese. Fried chicken and macaroni and cheese. And then what do you have on your socks? 
Beer socks. Beer socks. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh, okay. And there was, you know, that lack of connection, that disappointment, that heartbreak, the, you know, the, the denial, the, you know, the dark place you go to when you just can't deal with it. And then, you know, I took him surfing, which was like right under my nose. And he, he liked it and it made him feel good and his behavior was a little better. And if one thing led to another and we created surface healing mm. out of um, out of that uh, um, out of that connection I wanted to have with my son in surfing so it didn't matter that he was you know he wasn't a good surfer mm. it just mattered being in the water it mm. just mattered you know that moment together and so we took out his friend and his friend's friend and now it's 20 years of running free camps for mm -hmm. children with autism. So all of that was around surfing, and surfing has been, you know, my life um, and everything. Mm -hmm. you know? and there is such a beautiful comment or like feedback in the trailer of Surface Healing where this lady says, usually when um, people with um, autism come mm -hmm. together, it's like a sad reason. But with surface healing, it's about joy and happiness. Yes, yeah, and that's true. And, and you know, for I think for a decade, it, there was that that sadness uh, that was attached to autism, mm -hmm. and how sad it was, and you know, a very ne negative um, uh, uh, approach to the acceptance of it. And you know, uh, with us, I don't want to see any negative stuff. You know. I mean, we know deep down in our heart, it, it is, it is, it's, it's sad that I won't be able to really have a conversation with Isaiah. He won't ever get married, you know. He, um, you know, will, will never screw a woman. <laughs> hey, let's see the goat. <laughs> Doing what you love the most when yeah. you're in the flow. Living your passion. And I guess that's what you did your whole life, right? I, I, I did, but I... I thought it would come to an end because I didn't plan, you know, the future. But one thing led to the other, and when when I when at my lowest point, you know, which would be, you know, finding out my son's uh, autistic. You know, we had our first child was Ella. I named her Israel after me. You know, and she was so beautiful. You know, I still have the most beautiful wife in the world. But it was just like a whole dream come true, and then having Isaiah was a real, you know, wrench in the gears. So it really kind of fucked up my whole flow. Mm -hmm. But th that, that flow that I was on didn't mean anything in, in compared to, 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 you know, changing lanes and getting into this huge flow of autism and, and being able to share surfing with, with now maybe 100,000 surfers. So uh, uh, kids have come through surface healing, oh, wow. you know, and uh, millions have been kind of touched all because we had Isaiah. And I thought that it was the worst thing that ever happened to me. But it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because I got to meet the most incredible people and the most amazing families that invited me and all my volunteers into their lives to help them take their children surfing. And like surfing... It meant so much to me and was my life and it was so much fun and it granted me, you know, a, a, a lifetime of, of, uh, of enjoyment and health and all that. Um, but we got to, you know, take all these autistic children surfing, but it, it also had this great calming effect, this great uh, a connection with the families, this great, you know, natural uh, balance with the kids that really needed balance in their lives um, so it worked out so incredibly it was such a it was such a, a just a, a moving um, connection and a, and a real eye-opener to what life is really about mm -hmm. not this fucking trophy this doesn't mean shit I'll pee in this one <laughs> but you know to take a, a, a child out you know with autism surfing and to see them get on the board and ride a wave and be happy and connect and feel calm and feel um, just a little bit better, and the family watch and connect and, and, and be proud of their, you know, special son or daughter. What song are you going to listen to? What are you trying to put on? 
bonds. Oh, you're making a list. We're making a grocery list. Hey, cheese. Cheese. What color? Yellow. Ja, weil ich mir so sympathisch wäre, bin auch, weil, weil der Listen Junkie. Ich schreibe auch immer. Ja, ja. I, will, I want a scoop of rainbow sherbet. Good talking, Isaiah. Rainbow sherbet. Ritz crackers. Ritz crackers. Cheese. Okay. What kind of cheese? Yellow. Do you want the cheese ball? The, the port wine cheese ball? I want a box Ritz crackers. Yes, got it. And cheese. More cheese. You sure love cheese, huh? Yes. Yes. And all the volunteers, these are guys, I mean, uh, my father, uh, Doc, uh, God bless him, you know, lived to 93 years old, born in 1921. So all of his contemporaries, you know, when they're surfing in the 30s, um, I'm surfing now, my volunteers are some of his friend's grandchildren. You know, we, I've got the most incredible guys that, that can take these kids and get super rad. But all these guys that I mentioned are such good surfers and, and they're so good with the children. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's very hard because it's, it's like no other disability that it's so difficult to take the kids out. In the moment when they're, when they're releasing from the mom and dad and going to the surfer, it might take five, seven guys to get one little kid to lay down and stay on the board, but then once we once everyone backs off and that surfer has that child on the board, something magic happens. Mm. There's this connection and, and calming and being in the flow. <laughs> it's such a flow, and it's just a radical flow. Mm. And uh, I, I love it. I, I love it. And I, I, mean, I think it's 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 therapy, just like a lot of therapies out there um, that charge a lot for it. We do it for free. Mm. <laughs> And these are goats. It's a, a rebel in sky. Get him! <laughs> but that's a baby, no? That, not, no, that's a full-grown <laughs> uh, uh, miniature horse. <laughs> How cute are they? It's such a great job you do. Um, how can we, Ernst and I, how can our community help surface healing? Is it about funding? Is it about volunteering? What need do you have right now? You, you know, after 20 years, it's not so much funding. But it's, it's awareness, um, it is, you know, anybody in that autism community, you know, I'd like them just to see what we do. If we're around, you know, a location where they're at, because now we're going to Australia and the first New Zealand camp in Mexico and you know, scheduled for, you know, Brazil and, and uh, next year and uh, Japan and France and all these pl places, um, If people could come and just check it out and, and see, um, you know, a special child, especially with autism. We focus on autism because it's prevalent and it's it's an epidemic. And, and it's growing, right? When, when well, that beautiful boy out there, Isaiah, was born, it, aut autism was one in 10,000. And now it's one in under 50. Mm -hmm. uh, so those odds are horrible. Um, so something... He heard you. Something's got to I happen. saw a guy coming over. <laughs> But that's... Um, Where we feel make you a ship. What's that? Where they make a ship. Well, come here. They say, hey, join us. Sit down for a second. <laughs> we're, do, we're, doing, we're having talking time. I'd say, what do you, what do you think of surface healing? What? Surface healing. Do you have fun? Yes. Do you like being in the ocean? Yes. How does the, how does the water make you feel? Happy. Uh-huh. <laughs> And when you're on a wave, how does the wave make you feel? Happy. You have friends that you go to the beach and do surface healing? Yes. And you, what, what you, Isaiah goes to surface healing, where do you go? Kepan on the bay. Oh, we go to Camp Land in San Diego. Where else yes. are we going to go? Are you going to come with Daddy to um, uh, Florida this year? Florida. And then go to Hawaii? Yes. 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 <laughs> Isaiah's the boss of surface healing. <laughs> Okay? Yes. Okay, I'll come right in. I'll see you in a little bit. Do you want to make ground beef? Do you want to make a ship? You want to make a ship with the ground beef? We're gonna, we're, oh, you want to sculpt a meat ship out of the ground beef. Spanish galleon. Uh, to sculpt a, a Spanish galleon out of ground beef? 
main flour. <laughs> uh, may, oh, uh, uh, you want a ground beef Mayflower? Yes. I don't know. That sounds very, pretty hard. Yes. <laughs> but that's what you want to do. So you want to make the beef and then cook it? Make a ground beef ship spinach guy and main flour. Okay, I'll, I'll help. I'll do it. And three masks and two smokestacks. Three masks and one smokestack? Two smokestacks. Two smokestacks, okay. The bow and the stern. Okay, the bow and the stern. And the sim. <laughs> and the sim. <laughs> and the jib. And the jib? Yes. Okay. Done deal. All right, bye, Isaiah. Thanks for joining. Bye, Isaiah. <laughs> bye, Isaiah. <laughs> That's Isaiah. Oh, you got two Gatorades. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry. It's cool to share that, especially sharing um, the hope, you know, with other parents that have young kids, because he's kind of old in mm. the whole autism kind of generation. So there's going to be, you know, thousands of adults with autism that are growing up and um, you know, it, it's nice to to be where we're at now to give young parents hope that you know it's 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 bad yeah I get it mm. but you can have a life you can have a family and it's gonna get it's gonna get worse but then it's gonna get better you know mm. I mean and he's kind of calmed down and you know he, you see he tries to communicate the best he can but he's happy mm -hmm. and that's that's all we want out of life yeah, sure. That's the main goal for everybody. Right. Did he kind of change uh, your point of view to life somehow? Did you... I, I'm, I'm not the man I was. Yeah. And, you know, when I won this trophy, that was important to me. And that was the most important thing in the world. You're winning the contest, beating a hundred other guys. Um, it's not that important, you know. It just, you know, family and connecting and, you know, the joy and... Um, you know, the, the, the little things, you know, the simple things in life, it, it, he has, <coughs> you know, allowed me to see. We stayed at an Airbnb. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah for, Where? for a few days in, in San Diego, Diego. Okay. Yeah, at Pacific Beach. Yes. And he was so Californian, you know, yeah. like having these five, six surfboards all over the apartment. Yeah. And, and like spending every three minutes on the waves. Yeah. Yeah. He see, just uh, loves uh, it. Pacific Beach is nice. We run the surf camp right down Garnet. Yeah. The, the boulevard, yeah. Garnett, right, right there. That's where my, my father, um, shoot, that's where he learned yeah. to surf. Yeah. And right, yesterday right we've seen surf wise again, and mm -hmm. there are some uh, scenes shot at Pacific Beach, mm -hmm. I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I love that area. <laughs> that's where. He... There's a uh, at Tourmaline. There's a little placard that's in memory of his dad. Yeah. At the, at oh, really the beach. cool. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, go up. Yeah, I don't know. Here, jump, uh, jump on the back. My dream is to found a school, but a different school because you need to spend time learning stuff you would never need and you're not really interested in. And I feel your story and your family story is such a um, good example how you can just learn by doing. And mm. your father said, Stanford, like this is knowledge, but life, this is wisdom and this is how you want to learn. Correct. Correct. And... and and to your point exactly, every one of the brothers made a living at what they were good at, naturally. Yeah. You know, without any pushing, without any uh, um, any like real saying. As uh, my father telling, you, well, you have to be an engineer, you have to be a plumber, you know, you have to be um, a doctor. Mm. Well, well, nobody's going to be a doctor in our family, but. That, you know, just the natural talents, you know, he kind of just quietly, you know, home. One last question, is it? Yes. Um, at least I feel or we feel you have lived like the American dream. Um, is there another dream for future for you, you for know, your family? I don't know if I live the American dream. I definitely live the human dream. You know, and feeling, um, you know, connected. In my case, with the less fortunate, um, even with any special child, I'm just so drawn to them. And and uh, in public, I have to go up and say hi and talk and and uh, and be a part of that because that's who I am now. Um, but it seems like it's been only half, you know, of my life. 
And, uh, you know, the next half, um, I, I think it'll be more with autism. It'll be more with adults with autism. It'll, you know, it'll have maybe a school or something like you're talking about, mm -hmm. but just specifically for adults with autism, a place where he, Isaiah can work. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so now that's our, our next um, goal. Uh, because we, we get more press than like any autism mm -hmm. group, I think, in the world. Because it's so transparent and beautiful to watch, you know, a, a child that is freaking out on the beach and paddle out. And then you see him ride this wave and this joy and this incredible connection. I mean, it just, it just gives parents so much hope. Mm -hmm. um, and it works. It really works on a clinical and physiological level that it makes a difference. Thanks, Izzy. <laughs> My pleasure, brother. For your time. Thank you. For Thank having you us in your home. Appreciate it. See you next time. Aloha.